learning Python is just the beginning. Most devs finish the basics and they get stuck. They don't know what to do next and it kills their chance of ever getting hired. So here's exactly what you need to focus on after the basics if you actually want to land a developer job. So here's the hard truth that most people don't want to hear. Just knowing Python is not enough to get you hired. You might know how to write a for loop or define some functions or maybe even make an entire program and that's great, but nobody's hiring developers just because they can write these statements. The real gap is the following. You learned how to code, but you didn't learn how to actually build things that solve real problems. Let me explain this a little bit more in detail. In the real world, companies don't care if you can reverse a list or sort numbers with bubble sort unless you're interviewing at Google or something. They care if you can take a messy CSV file full of a bunch of customer data and turn it into a working dashboard that an executive can look at. They care if you can integrate two APIs, automate a workflow, or fix a broken deployment at two in the morning. Now this is the difference between I learned Python and I'm a software developer. Being employable means knowing how to do the following. Solve real problems, not just textbook ones, but ambiguous, messy, and weird problems that don't have a defined solution. Working with APIs, because no modern app exists today in isolation anymore, you're always using other components. Being able to connect to databases, not just read from them, but design and query them efficiently. Debugging and fixing things when they break, because of course, things are going to break, and then using version control like Git, not just saving files as final one, final two, final three, etc. And maybe the most importantly, build code that other people can actually use and understand. Now that's what companies are hiring for today. It's not about memorizing syntax or completing hundreds of leak code problems. It's about being someone that they can trust to ship working code in a real environment with a real team. And if you don't focus on closing that gap, getting beyond the basics of Python, then this is where you're going to get stuck and many people do get stuck for years. So what I'm gonna do for the rest of the video here is give you complete action steps and break down exactly what you need to do. And you can just steal this, go out and do it on your own. But if you want assistance with this and you are looking to land your first software developer job or level up in your career, then consider checking out my dev launch program, link in the description, more on that later. Step one on my list is to build portfolio worthy projects. And no, I don't mean another to-do list, calculator app, or guess the number game. Those are the projects that show you understand syntax. But if you want to actually land a job and get hired, your portfolio needs to prove that you can solve real world problems, the kinds that you would face on a real job. So what I'm gonna do is give you three examples of these kinds of projects that actually move the needle and are gonna get you to where you need to be. And the reason I've chosen these three projects is because we need to ask ourselves, what do Python developers actually do? And the three most attainable jobs that you could get if you're going to be working with Python are the following. The first is going to be doing automation and scripting. The second is going to be a junior or entry level web developer where you're typically working on some back end web services. And the third would be something like a data analyst. Now, of course, there's a lot of other stuff that you can do with Python, but these are the three most attainable avenues and the ones that you can get into the fastest. And that's where these three projects are going to kind of align. OK, so project number one is a web scraper and dashboard. Now, this would align with an automation or scripting type role. Now, let's say that you scrape live job listings from a site like Indeed or LinkedIn. You extract the titles, companies and salaries, and then you visualize them into a dashboard. OK, boom, you've just shown that you know how to use an API. You can do HTML parsing. You can do data cleaning. You can do automation with requests or playwright. You can connect to, for example, a web scraping tool. You can do visualization with Streamlit or something like Dash. And that's the kind of thing that small businesses may actually pay you to build. It's also great if you wanted to do something like freelancing or Upwork. OK, that's project one. Project two is the following an API backend with authentication. OK, now this would be for a junior web developer type position. And the goal here is to spin up a Python API using something like FastAPI or Django and add endpoints for users, posts, comments, and hook this up with a database and secure it with JWT token authentication. Of course, you can go much further. You can add a bunch of features. But when you do this, it shows that you have a knowledge of HTTP, REST, JSON, and authentication. Shows that you have database skills like using SQLite or Postgres SQL, or maybe an ORM. You have understanding of real world architecture, so communication between a back end and a front end through an API, and the ability to build something that actually looks like a real functional application. 
Now, when hiring managers see this type of project, it tells them, okay, this person goes beyond the basics. They understand the architecture. They can build something that's a little bit more complex and they've implemented all of these core features. And by the way, I'm not saying these projects are going to get you the job, but the point is you need to get to the level where you can make these types of projects. That's just a prerequisite before you could get hired. Now, project number three is a data analysis project with visual insights. So this could be something like pulling data from a public source, say housing prices or stock data. You then analyze the trends in that data using something like pandas or matplotlib and turn it into a clear insight driven report or some type of dashboard. Now, in this type of project, you'll show that you know how to do data cleaning and wrangling, exploratory data analysis or EDA. You can communicate the insights visually through charting or graphs, and you can tell a story with data. Now, again, this is what companies are looking for from junior level data analysts, not just basic data, but being able to actually drive insights based on it. Now, the key thing that's the same across all of these is that they're a real project that could simulate something you would actually do on a job. Each one also shows multiple skills working together. It's not just one specific thing. And most importantly, each project is easy to demo. You can send someone a link and they can view it. Okay, so if you can build some of these projects, specifically the ones that are in the area of development that you're trying to get into, like automation, data analysis, web development, et cetera, you're gonna have a significantly higher chance of getting hired. And again, you're building that base and those prerequisites. Okay, so at this point, you've built a few solid projects. Now that's great, but there's still one thing that most beginners are overlooking, and that's tools. Most of the time, when you're writing code, you are using a ton of different tools. And you can write all the code that you want, but if you don't know how to use the tools that actual dev teams rely on, then you're just going to get filtered out extremely fast. All right, so here's what you actually need to get comfortable with in terms of tooling. First, Git and GitHub. I'm going to go through this one quickly. Essentially, you need to understand how to use version control, how to clone a repo, create branches, make commits, push changes, open a pull request. That's the bare minimum. Really, you should be quite good with version control, but as long as you have some experience with it, you should be okay. Next on my list is Docker. Now, just the basics. You don't need to be an expert, but you should have some basic understanding of what Docker is, how to write a basic Docker file, and how to execute a Docker container. This is because a lot of times when you're writing Python code, you're going to be using Docker. You're going to be doing some environment management and dependency management. And this is something that's used across all kinds of real world development projects. Number three on my list is testing. Now, most beginners just skip this entirely, but even writing simple unit tests can just instantly level up your credibility. So you should use something like PyTest for backend and logic testing. You can do basic mocks for APIs, and you can show that you know how to write testable code, not just complete spaghetti. Now, testing is something that any good development team is going to implement, so you need to know how to do it or at least have some comfortability with it. Okay, next on my list, I have working with REST APIs. Now, a lot of junior developers are scared of APIs. They think it's this big, intimidating thing. Don't be. This is one of the easiest ways to look job ready extremely fast. So you should know how to use requests or HTTPX to make API calls from Python, how to parse JSON and what JSON is, how to handle pagination, headers, and authentication. And this is because most real world apps integrate with APIs. Think Stripe, Twitter, Slack, OpenAI, all of these are using various APIs and you're going to use an API in your Python project, almost guaranteed. And then last on my list, I have databases, specifically SQL. Okay, don't skip learning SQL. Pretty much every serious app is going to talk to some kind of database. doesn't matter whether you're a data analyst, a web developer, or doing automation. You need to understand, for example, Postgres SQL internals. You should be able to write basic select queries, do joins on tables, handle the CRUD operations, and integrate a database into a Python app using something like SQLite 3 or SQL Alchemy. Now, you don't need to be a complete expert in SQL. I wouldn't take a five month long course on this like I had to do in university, but you should know the basics. You should be able to write a few queries and you should just know kind of under the hood, how does a database actually work and how is Python interfacing with that? Now, there are definitely a lot more tools that you can and probably should learn, but I'm just gonna keep it simple in this video. These are the five most important. Anything else you can typically pick up pretty fast and depends on the specific job. Now, if you're still watching the video at this point and you feel like you You've done a lot of these things, but you're still struggling to land a position, then I recommend checking out my program, DevLaunch. What we do in this program is we do a complete audit of you. 
So we look at all of your current skills, your resume, your LinkedIn, what you're doing that's working and what you're doing that's not. And then we give you a complete rebrand and change and positioning so that you actually stand out in front of hiring managers and eventually land a job. Now look, in the past 60 days, we just got five students jobs. The program runs four months, we're only halfway through. And that's because a lot of times you already have the skills. You just don't know how to present those skills correctly and then how to pass the interviews when you get those opportunities. If this sounds interesting to you, if you are struggling and you are a serious developer and you already know how to code and know a lot of the stuff that I've mentioned in this video, then check it out from the link in the description. You can fill out the application form and if we think that we can help you, we'll get on a call with you and explain the entire program. Okay, with that said, let's get back into it now and let's move on to the next point here because there's still some things that you need to learn. And this is, first of all, to learn to work like a team developer. Now you need to stop thinking like a solo programmer and start thinking like a team developer. Because in the real world, you're never building applications alone. You're working with people and not just technical people, people that are program managers, for example, product managers, team leads, people that have no idea what coding is. Now this is where most self-taught developers completely hit a wall. So what I'm gonna do is go through a few topics that you need to get very good at in order to really present yourself as someone who is a real developer. Number one is code reviews and pull requests. Now in a real team, you don't just push to main, right? You actually create a pull request, ask for feedback, and then you review other people's code as well. So you need to understand how to describe your changes clearly, how to respond and review different comments, and how to give feedback to others without being a complete jerk. The first time that I really understood the importance of this is when I was working on a project with four other developers at a hackathon. This is before I had had an official job and all of a sudden the repo was a complete mess. No one had any idea what they were doing. And from that point forward, I said, okay, I need to learn how this works and we need to have a better way to collaborate. So definitely try working with some other people in a Git repo and you're gonna see very quickly why this is important. Okay, now step number two or skill number two is to write clear documentation. Now, great developers don't just write code. They make it easy to understand, not just for other people, but for yourself later on. So every project that you have should have a clean readme with basic setup instructions, should have example usage, clear descriptions of what your project does and why it matters. And then if there's any complex architecture, you should break that down and explain components of the code base that may be non-intuitive. Okay, skill three is to write clean, maintainable code. Now, this is where code quality really comes in. You're not trying to impress people with clever one-liners, right? You're trying to make your code readable, extensible, and easy to debug later on. Now this means using functions and modules, following consistent naming conventions, adding comments when needed, but not everywhere, you don't wanna clutter your code, and avoiding repetition and things like magic numbers. Now if your code looks like something that you'd have to revisit in a month or it's really confusing, that's a red flag. I have many videos on my channel where I talk about this topic in depth. Skill number four is using task management tools. Now, even in a personal project, tracking your work like you would in a team setting shows maturity and is something I do pretty much all the time. So use something like Notion, Trello, GitHub projects, even just a to-do.markdown file. Doesn't matter, but you need to log your tasks, the bugs, features that you're working on, anything that shows that you can track and plan your work like a professional and this is something you're going to do in a team setting, there's gonna be some other software used to understand who's doing what and when. And then lastly, skill number five is to communicate like a developer. Soft skills matter a lot. They're oftentimes the reason you get fired or get hired. You don't need to be the most charismatic person in the room, but you do need to be able to do the following. Explain why you write code in a certain way. Justify various trade-offs, speak up when you're being blocked or you need help, ask smart questions, and this is what real interviews are testing for. Not just can you code, but can we trust your work with our team and are you gonna communicate properly? That's why a technical interview is actually much more about communication than it is about the code that you produce. Okay, that's it for this topic. Let's move on to the last one. So at this point, you've built real projects, you've learned the tools, and you started thinking like a team developer. Now there's of course one thing left, you need to get 
and actually pass the interviews, which is where most people fail. Now, this is just where everyone screws up, right? Because they treat interview prep like just a game of grinding as many lead code problems as you possibly can. Now, that does not work, at least not if your goal is to get hired quickly. It may work in the long run, but it's just not a productive way to do this. So let me break down exactly what you should be doing if you want to land a job and pass these interviews. And I know this works because I'm doing it with a ton of students right now, and they're seeing massive success in quite literally 20% of the time to compare it to when they were doing it alone. Okay, so step number one, targeted data structures and algorithms. Keep that word in mind, targeted. You need a DSA, but you don't need to master 700 problems. Instead, you need to focus on the core 20% that shows up in 80% of interviews. So things like arrays, strings, hash maps, recursion and depth first search and breadth first search, binary search, sliding window, two pointers and basic dynamic programming. That's pretty much it. If you learn those patterns and you understand how they apply to different problems, most questions you get asked, you will be capable of answering. Even if you haven't seen the problem before, you should be able to solve it because you know these core patterns. Step number two is system design. Yes, even at a basic level. Now you don't need to design Google scale architecture, but if someone says, how would you build a URL shortener? You should be able to at least talk about it, right? The API endpoints, how you're gonna store the data, how the system may scale, different trade-offs or approaches you'd go with, how you test it or deploy it, and even just understanding basic concepts like this is a client, this is a server, this is a database, this is gonna cause a problem for us later on, especially if you're talking about backend roles, okay? So you need some basic system design understanding and some practice with those types of questions. Okay, number three, behavioral interviews. Now, this is something that a lot of people just wing, right? They think, okay, I got really good at lead code. I'm really good at technical interviews. And then they go in there and they bomb the first question they get asked, which is tell me about yourself, right? So, so many developers tank this round and mostly it's because they're awkward or they're vague and they just haven't rehearsed their answers. So you need stories that are ready for all of the times that you failed, a time where you fixed a bug, a time where you worked on a team, a time where you had to learn something fast. You get the idea, right? And you can use the star method, situation, task, action, and result to be specific and connected back to how you work today. This is actually something we focus on a lot in DevLaunch. We help you build a story bank. So all these different questions you could get answered, you always have a story associated with them. And it's very helpful to get past these behavioral rounds. And a lot of times, if you're very strong in the behavioral rounds, you'll get a little bit of leeway in the technical rounds. And that could be something that pushes you forward. Now, step number four is to do mock interviews. Now, this is a non-negotiable. You will fail the first few interviews if you haven't practiced saying things out loud, okay? You need to do mock interviews, ideally with someone like a friend, a mentor, someone who's given mock interviews before, maybe even a paid coach. And you need to record yourself, rewatch it, and notice things like the filler words you use, your confidence, your structure, how fluent your code is, and actually analyze it so you can improve. Now, interview prep isn't about grinding for six months, okay? I'm telling you, with DevLaunch, we've gotten people jobs literally in seven weeks. It's about being focused, deliberate and using your projects to prove that you're already acting like a professional. That's the key to the game here. Yes, there is some things that you can't skip. You are going to have to put volume in. You are going to have to learn data structures and algorithms. You are going to have to do a fair amount of problems, but you don't need to do 700 problems. And this definitely doesn't need to take you six months. When I prepared for my technical interviews, I prepped for about six to seven weeks. This was enough for me to land a job at Microsoft and to get offers from Shopify, okay? Given this was entry level, it was a few years ago, but the point is if you have a deliberate strategic system, then you're able to do this significantly faster than just blindly trying to do a bunch of interview questions, okay? Just hopping on leak code isn't going to get you success. Now, I hope this video was valuable. If this resonates with you and you really are serious about landing a job in the next four to five months, then consider joining DevLaunch. Again, you are the exact person we're looking for. You have the skills already. You're just failing in those later components. That's really the people we work with to level you up and just provide that guidance that you need in order to have that success and land that job. We just did it many times over with a bunch of our students. And I look forward to talking with you if you do consider that program. Anyways, guys, that will wrap it up and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.